Hello, and welcome to the Reciprocating Chiller System Recovery Cycle. In this session, we're going to see how you recover refrigerant from a reciprocating chiller that is currently operating. We'll discuss its different components as we go through them. To kick off, we're going to go to the rear of the chiller, in the back where we can find the liquid line and its components. As you can see here, for circuit one, circuit two, you see your filter dryer, solenoid, and your sight glass, which is down liquid line over here. All right. Now, remember, you have to understand that this liquid is high pressure, high temperature, subcool liquid, liquid that was just converted from a high pressure, high temperature vapor to a high temperature, high pressure liquid. Now, after this cycle, it's going to go through your filter dryer. Actually, initially, it's going to pass your king valve. All right. It's going to go through your filter dryer. Then it's going to go through your solenoid valve, and it's going to go on through your sight glass and your TEV, where it's going to drop in pressure and temperature and enter the evaporator. So going to the rear of the chiller, we're going to front seat king valves one and two. These are service valves, operate the same as your suction and your discharge service valve. We're going to front seat them. Control. All right. And king valve one front seated. Now that these valves are front seated, what this does is this is preventing the liquid refrigerant from leaving the condenser, entering the components, and ultimately ending in the evaporator. Now, what this is going to do is this is going to, of course, stopping the flow of refrigerant into the evaporator, causing a drop in pressure in the evaporator, and the machines and refrigeration circuit which are going to turn off on a low pressure cutout, which is a safety cutout. Now, let your chiller system shut off on low pressure cutout. We're going to turn it off at the panel. And then we're going to switch off with lockout and tagout, of course. Safety first, always. We're going to go to the power panels for cooling tower one and two and turn the starters off. Now, the starters, remember, we have the panel itself, we have the main disconnect, and we have the starters. We're going to turn them off. Of course, if they're not operating, repair, replace. Okay. Then we can come to Queen Tower 2. We can turn your starters off. Now we're going to go to condenser water pumps one and two and do the same thing. Repair, replace, doesn't operate. Turn off. Now we'll go to the chilled water pump and turn the starters off. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to go to reciprocating compressor circuit number one, which is over here on the left hand side. And we're going to the suction service valve, which is going to be at the end of the compressor where the motor is in. Now, so remember, as suction vapor goes through the suction line and into the compressor, it passes through the motor first, and this is to cool the motor windings. As you know, you have superheated, high, low pressure, low temperature vapor, and even though it's superheated, you have to understand that this is a very cold line, and it works perfectly to cool the motor. So let's go to the charging valve. It should be right over here. And we're going to front seat it, which is already front seated. All right, our, our valves are front seated. Make sure we don't have any venting of the refrigerant. And we're going to back seat the suction service valve. Now, before we do this, just a brief explanation. You have three options at your suction service valve. You have your front seated, back seat, and the valve is cracked off the back seat. Now, when you front seat this valve, 
what you're ultimately doing is when you, you're not allowing the refrigerant from the suction line, which is coming from the TXV component, it's going to come in, I apologize, from the evaporator, and it's going to come from the evaporator and enter the compressor to be compressed into a high pressure, high temperature refrigerant. Now, when you front seat it, you're blocking this completely. This will not allow no refrigerant to enter the compressor. Now, when you backseat this valve, what you're backseating is that you will not be able to add your gauges to this because when you backseat this, you're allowing the vapor to enter the compressor, but you will not be able to get any reading because backseating it will block it, the charging port from letting refrigerant into your gauges to get a proper reading. And now finally, when you crack this valve off the back seat, what this ultimately means is it's either front seated, back seated, but now it's in the middle. Now, when this valve is cracked off the back seat or in the mid center position from being fully open and fully closed, now this is allowing all ports are open. Your suction vapor, refrigerant vapor can come and enter your compressor. And at the same time, you can put gauges on this port and get a reading. So the valve is cracked, meaning that it's set so it can operate to read pressures and continue the refrigeration cycle. But now we're going to backseat this valve. The valve is backseated. Make sure that the charging valve and the discharge valve is front seated. Let's check the charging valve on the high side now. Right up here. Got the your charging valve is front seated, which is excellent. And we're going to backseat this discharge service valve. It's backseated. Now that we backseated, we can safely put gauges on this machine without any venting of the refrigerant. Now we're going to our gauge manifold. Now, this is standard gauge manifolds. Um, the color codes word with the blue side working on the low side which will be connected to your suction line. The red represents the high side of the refrigeration system will be connected to your discharge line. And you have your yellow hose manifold that can be connected to a variety of things. In this case, we're going to be connected to your recovery machine and your recovery machine will be connected to your recovery tank. In the field, when you're quote unquote tapping off or adding refrigerant to the system, you're gonna connect this hose directly into your recovery tank to add refrigerant into the system. This can also work when you're adding refrigerant to a new system, for example, such as a repair, compressor replacement. You're first going to add this hose into your vacuum pump where you pull it down to a vacuum. So let's go going to make sure these valves are front seated. They have to be fully closed. Repair, replace. Now let's see your high side. Place. Beautiful. So our gauge manifold now is now front seated. Now, just to clarify something, when these valves are closed or front seated, when you put these gauge ports on and your system is either running or it's shut off, but it's allowing you to get a reading, you will get a reading. These valves do not determine that these gauges will not be read. These valves simply al allow pretty much a port to the center port over here. So for example, if this valve is open, this will be open for refrigerant to circulate through here. And if this valve is open, you're going to allow refrigerant to circulate from the high side into your yellow holes or vice versa. Now, if you have both open, which you're not going to have this happen in the field, you can have, depending on the path of least resistance for pressure, you know, where the pressurized refrigerant will go, but this will never be the case. So. Now that they're front seated, so the recovery machine inlet valve is closed. Let's go to your recovery machine inlet. All right, let's close it. Okay, now that it's closed, let's connect it. And we're going to put our holes in here. Connect your holes. All right, so now you're connected. Now, in this case so far, when you turn this recovery machine on, this is going to recover all the refrigerant in the system and place it into this recovery tank. 
Now we're going to get the blue hose and collect the circuit service valve one transducer. Now, for this exam, because I'm giving this tutorial video in September of 2020, this is of course for the the previous simulator exam for the fire department of New York, and the fire department of New York doesn't want you to connect to a charging part, they will expect you to connect to the suction service valve transducer. For those of you who do not understand what a transducer is, you have gauges that will read pressures and temperatures. In this modern day and age, of course, and for many years now, a transducer simply digitalizes that pressure reading and gives it to you on the control panel. A lot of systems have both, and I recommend having both, where you'll have both physical gauges and transducers on a control panel. That way you can assure readings are proper and correct. Let's go to the transducer. We have the hose connected. Okay. Going to connect. We're going to front seat suction service valve. Okay. Suction service valve is now front seated. And now we're going to back seat the recovery valve. Now back seat. Now let's go and connect the high side now, which is the red hose. Okay. We're going to go to your transducer, which would be right up here. We'll connect the hose. Okay. And we're going to front seat the discharge service valve one. This is now isolating the compressor from the whole system, allowing us the readings to be read, or in this case, the refrigerant to be recovered. Okay. We're going to backseat the recovery valve connected to the red hose. Backseat it. Okay. Now, let's go to our gauges. We're now fully connected. We're connected to our suction service valve port, discharge service valve port, the transducer ports to be exact, and we're also connected to our recovery machine that's going to pull the refrigerant from the system and place it into this recovery cylinder. I'm going to backseat the manifolds on the high side and the low side. Okay, see we're player to replace this gauge. Okay, we might as well do the other one as well. Okay, there you go. We're going to recover, open the recovery machine inlet valve. Okay. No options, just to make sure. You want to make sure everything's open, everything's clear. And we're going to turn this on. There we go. As you can see here, the gauge readings are going down. We expect it to go down to zero PSIG and into a vacuum even. Pull out as much as possible. A lot of modern technology machines, we use yellow jacket recovery machines where I work. They turn off after reaching a certain vacuum pressure. A lot of these machines are also equipped with a mini filter dryer to make sure the refrigerant you're recovering goes through the filter dryer for any impurities in the refrigerant when placing it to the recovery tank. Okay. Okay, let's check what we got. We got 15 inches of mercury. And over here. Now, for those of you who see a difference in these gauges, please remember that your suction gauge is not just a gauge, it's a compound gauge. And remember, a compound gauge reads pressure and vacuum pressure as well. And this is a regular gauge that goes to 240 PSIG. Okay, so now that we're good, we're going to go to the going to front seat the recovery valve on suction service valve one. Beautiful. And then we're going to front seat the recovery valve on discharge service valve one. We're going to front seat the gauge manifolds high side and low side. Okay. 
we want to close the inlet valve. And then now we're going to shut our machine off. So if you're wondering why we're shutting the machine off, as an understanding. Now remember, this recovery sheet may be in a vacuum. You have no refrigerant in the system. But you also don't want to shut the machine off while possibly, depending on the age and the model of the machine, where refrigerant can circulate back. So what you do is you come in, we front seated, aka closed our ports at the compressor, close our ports at the gauge manifold. Now we shut off this machine and there's no way of refrigerant escaping going back into the system. We're going to disconnect the blue, red, and yellow hoses. Disconnect, blue, red, yellow hoses, and we're going to confirm our answer. As you can see here, we got a 100. Procedures were done correctly. And that is our recovery for the reciprocating chiller system. Now, you have options here whether for example, we turned the starters off and we didn't touch the main disconnects. Now, as you can see here, it's not noted here, but this is something if you choose to do so, there's nothing stopping you. It doesn't hurt to shut them off and put a lockout tag out for this reciprocating chiller recovery um, procedure, you know. But anyways, Feel free to leave any comments or questions, and I'll be more than happy to help or make any necessary adjustments or improvements. Thank you.